so the kiss, which, you know, probably if we count the thinker as the most cliched piece of art in the Western world, we can count the kiss as the second most cliched piece of art in the Western world. And unfortunately, it's, um, it's often treated like it's a Valentine's Day card, <laughs> when in fact, it's this sordid story of adulterers who were originally created to be on the gates of hell. So originally, this sculpture was to be placed, this was its back, here on the left door in this area of the gates of hell. That's where it was originally supposed to be. Well, Rodin, we'll get to the gates of hell in a moment. He never finished the gates of hell during his lifetime. He created all these, you know, hundreds and hundreds of little sculptures for it. Um, and some of them got very, very popular during his lifetime, early on, before the gates of hell even was first exhibited in 1900. And the kiss was one of those that got really, really popular. So here, you know, something made 20 years before the gates of hell was kind of semi-completed, not, not ever cast, but in plaster. And it was already really, really popular. So he started making it in different sizes. You know, there's a smaller size that he made. There's a larger, you know, much larger life-size one. But the story is really, really fascinating because parts of the gates of hell, you know, the inspiration behind it is Dante's Divine Comedy and the idea of, of purgatory. And within the poem, but also within real life, were these two people, Paolo, the man, and Francesca, the woman. And they were both from two powerful Italian families in the 1400s. And the families decided they needed to get the kids married. Okay, so Francesca was to marry Paolo's brother. Now, on the day of the wedding, Francesca had never met her husband-to-be, and so they had Paolo stand in for the brother. Because as, as Francesca would find out later that evening, uh, Paolo's brother was very, very short and deformed. So the family didn't want to use the brother, the real brother, as her husband, so they had this stand-in of Paolo so that she didn't just run out the door and leave. So when she first walked in, she was super excited to see this very tall, very handsome man. Like, wow, that's my husband now. Great, this will be great. But then it's like, well, no, this is the stand-in for your husband because you're not going to meet your husband until later tonight. This is his brother, Paolo. Nice to meet you. Well, they ended up, she got married, of course, um, to Paolo's brother, but Paolo and Francesca ended up having this adulterous affair. And what's happening in the sculpture is, in his right hand, he's holding, I mean, sorry, his left hand, he's holding a book. And the story is, in, in Dante's Inferno, they were reading the story of Sir Lancelot and Guinevere, and she became enraptured with this handsome guy. And she throws herself on him, throws her leg up over his leg, brings her arm around, comes in and kisses him. He's still like, what the heck's going on? I mean, he's sitting up like stiff. His head is barely turned in. His hand, his hand here, is, is, his right hand, is barely touching her thigh. His left hand has the book. His right hand is barely touching her thigh. His thumb is still, still up, you know, on it. And she's like totally into it. So he's just barely happening here to capture that early, early moment. Again, getting back to Rodin doing things that were just partial. Because then what happens in the story is right in the midst of this moment, there's a knock on the door, a pounding on the door. And it's her husband, Paolo's brother, pounding, 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 let me in. So she, Francesca tells Paolo, okay, you need to leave. And this is what happened in real life. Well, at the time, in the 1400s, there weren't staircases in houses. That was not something that really existed. 
there were these hatches with ladders between the floors. And so she's like, okay, go down, the, go down that hatch to get to the next floor. So Paolo's like, okay, great, bye, I'll see you later. Runs over to the hatch, opens the hatch, leaps down into the other floor. She, you know, puts herself together, goes, answers the door, like, hey, honey, what do you need, you know? And he's like, I know what's going on. Well, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on what side of the team you're on here, Paolo got stuck, his shirt, he was actually clothed in real life, his shirt got stuck on the latch of the hatch. And so he was hanging there. He hadn't already gone down to the first floor. His brother comes in, sees Paolo in the hatch, kills him, and then turns around and kills his wife. And so that's the reason why this was originally created to then be in the gates of hell. The idea being that here was this couple enraptured with each other in this adulterous relationship, because Paolo was actually already married too and had a son. Um, and then they were killed at this, you know, shortly after this moment that's been pictured here. And so that's why they were kissing in the gates of hell. Now, it became really hard for people to understand that because they thought this was, was this romantic image of what was really going on, even though it was an expla explanation of what was actually being talked about in Dante's Inferno. The, to kind of continue the story just a little bit so you know how it kind of wrapped up, after Paolo's son grew up, he ended up killing his uncle, the man who killed both of them. So that kind of completed the whole story there. But anyway, so that's why this is really popular for Valentine's Day cards, is that reason. 